for Reba McIntyre, I Cannot Even Get the Blues, and Gar Garth Brooks, Long Neck Bottle. The Songwriters Guild was formed as the Songwriters Protective Association in 1931 and promotes the profession of songwriting. Welcome. Thank you so much, um, Chairwoman Velasquez and uh, Ranking Member Graves for uh, the opportunity to testify on the impact of uh, intellectual property on entrepreneurship and job creation. I would also like to take a moment to thank uh, Fred Cannon of BMI and Cindy Tripodi of the Copyright Alliance for their assistance in alerting me to this uh, hearing. My name is Rick Carnes, and I'm president of the Songwriters Guild of America. The SGA is the nation's oldest and largest organization run exclusively by and for songwriters. I'm a professional songwriter living and working in Nashville, Tennessee since 1978. While I've been fortunate enough to have a modicum of success in my career writing number one songs for both Garth Brooks and Reba McIntyre, along with songs recorded by Dean Martin, Steve Warner, Alabama, Pam Tillis, Conway Twitty, among others, I'm constantly reminded of the perilous existence of all of us who have chosen songwriting as a profession. Critical for this committee is the fact that professional songwriters are not employees. We are self-employed, small business people, and the songs we write produce jobs everywhere you look. Practically everything in this country is sold with music. Examples abound. Just turn on the TV and listen to the car commercials. Every restaurant provides music with your meals. Fashion follows music. Sporting events have music. Technology is tied at the hip to music. The iPad and the iPhone and practically everything else that starts with an I uh, delivers and plays music. Can anyone deny the resurgence of Apple computers was tied directly to the iPod and iTunes as a music delivery service? Search engines sell huge amounts of, mu of advertising on searches for songs. And music file downloading was and is a major driver in the adoption of broadband internet service. Songwriters' jobs are valuable to the economy and totally green. No smokestacks or heavy infrastructure costs are needed for song creation. The only, thing we, the only resource we deplete is pencil erasers, and the only thing we spill is coffee. Every single job in the music industry springs from a hit song. Unlike recording artists, songwriters don't make money from live shows or selling merchandise because we don't perform and frankly, we're not that pretty. We're the folks who sit in a room alone with a guitar and a blank page and a burning desire to tell our story through music. As professional songwriters, we make all of our money from copyrights. The income from those copyrights uh, come primarily from two sources, CD sales, and if we're lucky enough to get a single, we get performance money when the song is played on radio or TV. But songwriting as a profession is vanishing. Songwriters can no longer depend on record sales for a major part of their income in a market where it is estimated that 20 songs are stolen online for every song that's sold. The music publishers are not contracting staff songwriters anymore. It's too risky to advance money for songs in a market that doesn't protect those songs from theft. The last music publisher I signed with had 12 professional songwriters on staff in 1998, the, the year of Napster. By 2008, they had let go of all of their staff writers, including myself and my wife. We need to establish new business models for di digital music delivery that will ensure the protection of copyrighted songs while giving consumers a great experience with music at a fair price. Unfortunately, it is very difficult to establish those business models when the entrepreneurs we need to fund those ventures have to compete in a marketplace glutted with stolen music. It is the hope of songwriters everywhere that technological innovation will help find a solution to the problem of music piracy. In that regard, the SGA supports the development of high-performance content delivery networks that could give consumers a better, safer experience in accessing music online. In this way, we might be able to compete with the virus-ridden, poor-quality, illegal copies of copyrighted songs you so often find on peer-to-peer -peer services. In closing, let me recount an experience that is happening all too often to me with my discussion with songwriters today. I met a legendary uh, country songwriter in a coffee shop last month in Nashville, and he told me he's now selling ammunition at gun shows instead of writing songs. When I asked him if he was ever going to start writing again, he said, and I quote, why bother? There will always be people who are moved by the muse to write the occasional song. 
but without a way to sell their music and make a living, the professional songwriters that made American music the envy of the world will pursue other jobs that pay a livable wage, jobs where their work and their rights are respected and protected. In conclusion, Ms. Chairwoman and members of the committee, SGA truly appreciates your efforts on the behalf of small business people like us. We look forward to working with you to enliven job creation in the music industry through the protection of intellectual property rights and the encouragement of technological innovation in the delivery of music. SGA and I stand ready to be a part of that effort. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Carnes. Our next witness is Mr. Stephen Friedman. He is the president of T3 Technologies located in Thailand.